Oh, it's Petra predictions in Croatia. They've been the strongest Slavic nation in the world for some time now, and it's very clear that their strength is within the midfield as they dictate and control the pace of games very well. The defense is pretty solid too. What I notice is that Croatia's issue seems to be an attack as they've switched it up various times. They've played a front three or a solo striker with various attacking midfielders. With these various attacking styles, Croatia has used 10 different attacking players in eight qualifying matches. Yes, this shows there is incredible depth to the squad, but for me, this also shows a big confusion of who is their best strikers, who are the attackers they can rely on as they're constantly changing them up. I actually rate Petkovic and Levaya. I'm not really sure why they're not utilised enough, but I think they're strong, solid number nines that hold up the ball very well. I'm not going to lie, there is going to be better analysis out there on the Croatia national team, but I've done what I could within a limited time frame. Croatia potential this tournament I see them only reaching the round of 16 they have the potential to go further but they don't tend to do well in the Euros as they do in the World Cup for some reason they have never won a knockout game within the Euros and I think this trend will continue Slovenia this is a team that plays to their strengths as they play a 4-4-2 within this they like to keep compact quite happy to sit deep and let the oppositions have possession and the reason this works is because they have quite good all-round number nines especially in Sheshko, you've got Sporar and even Vipodnik is a decent alternative. One way going forward, Slovenia like to use the flanks, especially in Stojanovic and Janja, in order to stretch the opposition and by doing so they hope to create space in the centre for strikers like Sheshko and Sporar. Slovenia is also a team that likes to play on the counter-attack as they have a very strong tackler midfielder in Cherin who does pick up the pieces and then within that he'll switch up the play, he looks for the long-range passes or even hoofs it over the top for one of the strikers to pick up quickly. In Oblak, Slovenia have an elite keeper that they can trust on, especially at times when the defence goes wrong. Slovenia's potential this tournament, I see it being a group stage exit. I don't feel like they're versatile enough in their style of plays. I'm not sure how well they will adapt to quick paced teams. Their decision making tends to be quite slow and predictable in this, so I don't really see them going far this tournament. A prosty Slovenia. Serbia. This team actually confuses me because they qualify for World Cups pretty regularly. They have amazing players, but they never seem to perform in tournaments. Serbia usually play a 3-4-2-1, where they actually like to play out from the back. They try to get the ball to the wing backs, where the wing backs will push up and try and make crosses to reach number nines like Mitrovic or Vlahovic to head on, or even utilize with their feet, as these strikers are good with their feet. Or the wing backs will try and play it back centrally, where Serbia have creative attacking players like. Tadic or Milenkovic Savic. In going forward, Serbia do have options and their builder plays pretty good. The issue is with Serbia is that the wing backs don't seem to track back well enough to defend, and this leaves the defense very exposed. And with a three man defense, this will stretch the defense naturally as the center backs try to cover some space, but of course, that leaves such gaps. For the opposition and especially against teams like England or even Denmark where they have pacey wingers and fullbacks and they will overload very quickly in the opposition box on the counter-attack Serbia will have real issues and a lot of the goals Serbia conceded actually in qualifiers was a result of this and it goes to show their fragile defense that they only kept two clean sheets in eight qualifying matches and that was in their first two so the remaining six they conceded and let's be honest, their group wasn't that difficult, so they might be really exposed against teams like England and Denmark. It's encouraging to see that Serbia has stopped their trend of sacking a manager every time they get out of the group stage in a World Cup, and they've stuck with Stojkovic, and now they've qualified for a consecutive tournament. So hopefully with this managerial continuity, this genuine development and progress within the team rather than starting fresh all the time. And I think this will really work to Serbia's advantage. Serbia's potential this tournament not going to lie, I see it being another agonizing group stage exit, I'm sorry. They definitely have the potential to get out of the group, and they have the players, the squad experience, a good manager, just they're defensively not sound, and they do have difficult oppositions, but I hope I'm proven wrong in that 
they do get out the group. Poland, since they changed their manager to Probeers, Poland have looked like a really strong, cohesive unit, and there looks like there's good chemistry amongst the squad, and it's quite clear that they've bought into the manager's new ideology. What's particularly interesting is that Probeers has made Lewandowski more of like a cam position, playing that bit deeper, as Lewandowski has always been good at finding good space, and he's continuing to do this within his new role, but a lot of the time he is left isolated and it doesn't seem like the team is picking him out as often, which in turn is having an impact on how Poland attack as they don't really seem certain on how to move forward properly. But nevertheless, this Poland side seem to know how to manage the games very well, even when they're not playing good. One to watch for Poland, Zalewski. He always seems to be in good space and is always available. He's happy charging at defenders, but will also track back to defend very well and he's got good ball control and I genuinely think this is a type of player that Poland can look to the future. Poland's potential this tournament I see it being a group stage exit for them. Their group is actually very difficult and the other teams in their group just have a better style of play, utilize their players much better than Poland at the moment and Lewandowski playing a bit deeper I think the other teams will figure that out and block it out straight away way i do feel though under probeers there will be progress with poland but it all just seems a bit too soon for this tournament. Ukraine, their team spirit is absolutely incredible and they've also shown that they can dig deep in games. They're also the type of team that have shown that they can dominate a game as well, particularly with possession. However, they do look shaky in defense and they have to rely on Lunin a lot. Even when Ukraine dominate games, it feels like they're not taking enough striking opportunities and this could be down to many of their forward players not playing enough for their clubs therefore being off for. Ukraine have tried out various formations to uh, so so success and I guess they're just trying to work on better in their attacking opportunities but they usually do go with a 4-2-3-1 and regardless of what formation they've gone with it's very often that a striker is left on their own and not supported properly. Ukraine's potential this tournament I could see them reaching the round of 16 they've got a tight doable close group in group e however though because of how i feel about the other teams in this group i actually see ukraine getting knocked out in the group stage and for me it's really about them not taking enough opportunities just being a bit wasteful on the ball that will hinder them this campaign slovakia kaltzone has been absolutely revolutionary for slovakia for the first time i've ever seen they're actually playing good attacking type of football but they know when to sit back deep as well. Under Kaldzone, Slovakia have played a 4-3-3 and in doing this they're quite happy with the opposition having ball possession and they like to interrupt the flow of the opposition within the midfield especially with strong tacklers like Kutska and Lobodka and within that they quickly transition on the counter-attack. This counter-attacking style of football actually works to Slovakia's advantage as they do have the players to do it like Harris Lin, Bozhenik, Suzlov come through even Schranz and Mack as substitute alternatives are pretty decent so they have surprise and depth along the front three and this is where I think the manager has been very clever to tailor the style of football to the Slovak players. The manager rotated the squad quite a lot during the qualifiers and Slovakia still managed to come second with relative ease. Okay Slovakia's group wasn't that difficult but it still goes to show that Slovakia have surprise and depth in their squad. There are a few times during the qualifiers where Slovakia didn't really play that well they were on the back foot a lot in matches but they still able to grind out results and this is really important this mentality for tournament football. Slovakia's potential this tournament I see them reaching the round of 16 but depending on who they get in that knockout game I wouldn't actually be surprised if they are the surprise package of the tournament and reach the quarterfinals they do have the potential to reach the quarterfinals they know how to dig deep in games they play 
play to their strengths. They also have decent depth as well and they can rotate their squad. And now this being the third consecutive Euros they've qualified, now playing more attacking football too. I see this being a good tournament for Slovakia. Czechia, they're actually a very good team. It's just a lot of their goals actually came from the midfield. So it's quite clear they don't have clear strikers or a clear front three. And you can see throughout the qualifiers, Shilhavi really rotated the front three a lot. This is probably because Czechia's main goal threat, Patrick Schick, has been on and off injured and he didn't even play a single qualifying match. Also noteworthy, Shilhavi actually resigned after Czechia successfully qualified and now Czechia have appointed Hasek, which for me, in terms of Czechia standards, I think is a questionable appointment when you look at his managerial statistics. They don't really boast well, so this is really uncertain for Czechia to enter a tournament with a new manager though sometimes it really is successful having a new manager and idea so we'll just have to see how it plays out. Czechia appointing a new manager with their strikers being inconsistent for club and country it's really difficult for me anyways to analyze how this Czechia team is going to play and how they're going to do in the tournament therefore I see their potential this tournament being pretty low Group stage exit, I see it. And if you look at Czechia's records within the Euros, it's quite clear they have a knockout stage, group stage, knockout stage, group stage exits. And I think this pattern will continue. But also because I think the other teams in their group as well are on better form, which may pose issues for Czechia too. So there you have my predictions on how well I think each Slavic nation will do in this Euros. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Which Slavic nation do you think will surprise in this Euros? And as always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.